My name is Laurie Goulet. I'm a sculptor. I've been a sculptor for many years. And, uh, you know, it all kind of started with my experience in Inwood Park with Mrs. Voorhees. Uh, I, I'll tell you the story, how I really got there. When I was seven years old, I was queen of the May Parade in Isham Park, you know, the Democratic May, May Parade. And my mother dressed, dressed me like a queen, you know, tiara, the bodice, and a very, I actually have photographs of it. And I was, remember sitting on the float waiting for the king. And the king came along and he was about half my size, chubby, and he had freckles like I've never seen. But uh, it turned out he didn't have freckles, it, he had the measles, which of course I got them, and I was in bed in... Uh, that was probably June, and very restless and tired of cutting out paper dolls. And my mother went to the store and got me some of the modeling clay. It was a green, uh, uh, like plastiline. It, it never hardened. And I had so much fun doing, making little figures, little things. I asked my mother to get me some more, and she was nice. In fact, she's the one who put the clay in my hands first. and. Uh, she said to me, well, there's a couple upstairs uh, that just came from Europe. His name, I remember very well, was Otto Schenk. I remember because he's the one that told me to go to the park. And I showed him my work, and he said, oh, that's very good. Well, there's a lady in that park who teaches children how to do clay. You go and see her. And this is what I did. I went to the park and uh, uh, when I was better. And I remember when I got there, it was very beautiful trees and flowers. It was a really beautiful place. There was a house, uh, an Indian store, and a, a house that ran up the hill with many, many uh, buildings behind it. And I, I knocked on the window, the door, the f nobody was home. Probably was a Sunday or something like that. Mm. And I went up and I kept looking through. Nobody was there, no one answered the door. And I finally got to the top of the uh, boardwalk, and there was this big building with a very dusty window on it. And I went over and I looked in it like this. <laughs> the sun was in my back. <laughs> Look, <laughs> and there was Mrs. Worry sitting on the uh, workbench, and she looked at me, uh, a kind of, what is this little girl doing there? <laughs> she came to the door and she invited me in, and she was very nice. And ever from that moment on, for the next four years I, I studied with her and I had, it was a happy, really happy time of my life. Um, then we moved to California and I didn't, um, I wasn't able to do any kind of work, artwork or any contact with anything and I wrote her a letter in a, a couple of years lamenting the fact that it was, I couldn't learn anything, there was no pottery, there was no anything that, that would encourage me to be an artist. And she wrote me a beautiful letter back telling me how I could train myself to draw, to observe, and to be cultivated. She said, uh, read poetry, uh, do things that are uh, work from nature, and uh, which I, uh, I took her advice very seriously. And she's, um, in a way, she guided my whole life from that moment, Mrs. New York, to Hollywood, to this present day, I've never forgotten Mrs. Worries. I, I speak of her all the time. Could you describe what you remember of the pottery works? What it what it looked like? The oh yes, it was it was really a beautiful. It's like a, I I thought of it as a fairy house, you know, as a kid, in the trees and little windows and things. And when I the studios were very uh, full of all kinds of finished work, and in fact the people who worked there were very, very kind, and I had never met such a nice group of people, and the environment that I came from, the people weren't like that, and I said, this is a different world. It was a different world, and Mrs. Voorhees is responsible for that, because this was a gentle world, a world where they were creative, and that were very giving. It was wonderful. It was always in my memory as a great experience. Uh, she was so kind to me, and we, she used to invite me to tea 
the first time I ever had a, a, a you know, apple turnover I had in her house. And uh, she was generally very sweet, very kind, and very uh, encouraging. In fact, I have the two, the two pieces that I did, that I first exhibit in the Museum of Natural History. I have them upstairs, that my mother saved them. It was Rip Ram Winkle sleeping with his, with his dog, and Rip Ram Winkle's wife with all the children and the cats. I mean, <laughs> anyway, they're kind of cute little pieces. I remember when I was making the, the uh, um, Rip Ram Winkle, we were sitting there, and I started to do some, and I was making a tree, and she came in and pressed the tree up. Her fingerprints are there when she helped me to make the tree. <laughs> so I, I just noticed that recently. She was she was giving. She was a very giving person. And um, I, what can I say? I just love that lady. And it, how about just the general setting? How did that add to the atmosphere of the, uh, the oh, pottery? The, the beautiful setting. Oh, the the uh, studios and the boardwalk. It was a dream. It was so different from. 218th Street, you know, at Broadway, and where I went to school, this was a, a, a heaven, a haven, to go there and, and work on Saturdays. Who, what little girl would ever have such an opportunity? I, I learned later, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt. This was one of her pet projects. She wanted to see it go on because it taught children like me, depression children, ceramics. Uh, she had other kids like me, and I didn't learn till later that she really was behind it, raising money for Mrs. Worries. So we have to thank Eleanor and to thank Mrs. Worries and the whole thing. Well, they had the pottery would be like a Saturday afternoon. I would go there, and uh, I ask her what what she wants. She would have me run around doing certain things, and then she would sit down. I remember the first lesson she gave me. She took a piece of clay and made a little base. And then she rolled out the rings, the, the coils. And she started to put it on the coils, one, two, and then she uh, cross hatch inside and, and uh, closed the cross hatching to, to seal it. And that's the, the lesson she gave me, and I worked a whole bowl up. That was, I remembered that very well, and she showed me how to seal it so the cracks wouldn't. Then I remember she showed me how to prepare the clay. You take the lumps and work it and slash it on the uh, cutting board. <laughs> it was very, very nice. Later on, she taught me the wheel, uh, on the wheel. You know, I was a kid. And she taught me to, 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 on the wheel. I made many bowls. I got so I could do this. And I, I, was, I was wonderful for me to do that. You can't imagine how exciting it was to, to learn all of this at such an early age. Just before I left for California, that would be, this was four years later, from about 11, uh, it was at the time I remember going over to the pottery one day and Mrs. Laurie's telling me that they told her to leave. Would you write a letter? I went home and I wrote this letter, but at that time there was a photographer there who posed me and took a picture of me and I was in the newspaper the next day great moment in the newspaper and uh, because I wrote the letter and as it turned out the I think it was Moses gave her a stay I call it a stay an extra three months to move and then she moved to this uh, building on 156th Street was it something like that that I, I remember I went to see her just before we left to say goodbye and while I was there, she asked me to run upstairs to the fifth floor with some errand. And I ran up the stairs, as I used to do, ring around all the time. And I, was, I walked in the door, and lo and behold, I was just struck. There was a man making a portrait of his wife in clay. You know, she was sitting there, and I said, oh my God, that's, that's what I want to do.